Hey, so welcome back. We need to finish lesson one. We only did half of it last time. We are now on page 337, so please make your way to 337. And we're going to do a little bit of review from middle school. Uh, what we're going to review is the Pythagorean theorem, which is a most famous theorem, one of the more famous th theorems in mathematics, and it involves a right triangle. You need a right triangle. And what it says is, the Pythagorean theorem says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if they give you values like three and four, and they ask you to find the other side if it's a right triangle, this is usually how it's you know shown to you in middle school. You can use your equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? And I think you remember that probably. That's an equal sign. Uh, and in this situation, you just have to make sure that the largest side is the c. C is the largest side, so that means the other two will be right here. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared, and then we'll get 9 plus 16 will equal c squared. That'll give us a 25 equals c squared, but then we got to take a square root. I don't have to worry about the negative one, right, because this is distance, and distance can only be positive. They'll cancel out, and we'll get c equals the square root of 25, which is 5 in this situation. So I would say c is 5, and then we can say the number set of three, four, five is a Pythagorean triple. All right, so we have three, four, and five. We know that three squared plus four squared equals five squared. So we say that number set is a Pythagorean triple. Now, let's look at 1a. Determine whether the set of numbers is a Pythagorean triple. So we just need to check to see does a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember, you always gotta put the largest number by itself, that's where C goes. So that's gonna be the nine right here. So we're gonna check, does four squared plus five squared equal nine squared? So we just need to work that out. We get 16 plus 25, does that equal 81? And I'm gonna put a little question mark over that because we're not sure, right? Does that equal 81? Uh, what do we get here, 41? 41 does not equal 81. So the answer to A would be no. And it says explain your reasoning. A squared plus B squared does not equal C squared. In this case, that's my reasoning. Good enough. Let's try part B now. We have some decimals. Let's change it color up. So remember, the largest side has to go by itself. So what do we have here? Uh, we have 0 0.3. I'm going to do it down here. 0 0.3 squared plus 0 0.4 squared has to equal 0 0.5 squared. And does it? I'll put a little question mark right there. I don't know. So 0 0.3 squared, that's going to be 0.09. And we're going to add that to 0.16. Does that equal 0.25? And you find out you add those two together. And yes, 0.25 is going to equal 0.25. So the answer here would be yes, because a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Yeah, notice above we have does not equal, but this one has equal. You do on your own right now, 1C. Check 1C, go. Okay, so hopefully pause the video, you worked that one out, and with a little bit of larger numbers, we can see that yes, I get 7,000, 7, sorry, 921 equals 7,921. Just make sure you put that 89 where the C is. Easy enough. Those are called Pythagorean triples. Now, sometimes they work, and they're not Pythagorean triples, and sometimes they do work, and then we'd, we'd call them they are Pythagorean triples. So the question is, how can we figure out sets of Pythagorean triples? How do we know when they work? Well, that's what today's lesson is about. You might be wondering, like, why are we going back to these Pythagorean triples? It's about identities. So here's an identity from a guy named Euclid. Now, Euclid, Euclid was, he was an ancient Greek mathematician. And some people call him the father of geometry. He did a lot of work. In geometry and what he figured out is if you have any two numbers and your book calls them R and S where R is the greater number R is greater than S you take those two numbers you can figure out what the third number for that Pythagorean triple would be so up here they just gave us sets of numbers and sometimes they worked and sometimes they didn't but what you could figure out is if you're if I give you two numbers you can generate one two three of these numbers such that uh, there is a relationship where a squared plus b squared would equal c squared. So here's the right triangle. The two numbers are not necessarily the sides that are given. Okay, so you can see this complex formula here. Oh, 
given any two numbers, it'll generate the other one. But here's the relationship between the two. R squared plus S squared, uh, quantity squared, is going to equal R minus S and then 2RS, each of those squared as well. So that's the same as C squared equals A squared plus B squared, and it works out that way. Let's do an example of this. We're now on page 338, and you can tell your book went through this worked example. They can kind of, they picked A and B for R and S. I don't know why they just didn't use R and S, but they replaced it with A squared plus B squared, quantity squared. You can go through and you can see this identity. This is, uh, what do we call this? A polynomial identity right here where we get back. This one was actually on your homework, remember? Remember that little trick from the last question on your homework? You can notice that this is a squared. It's a squared squared plus 2a squared b squared plus b squared quantity squared. But anyways, let's look at 3a. Use Euclid's formula to generate a Pythagorean triple. Okay, so I'm going to use Euclid's formula. Now, I'm going to write down what that is. So here's that amazing formula, and I'm going to choose two integers. Now, so what if I choose r to be 6 and s equals 4? Which Pythagorean triple set, what set of numbers will these two integers generate? And so that's what we'll figure out right now. So let's figure it out. All right, so I'm just gonna plug in here. So we get six squared plus four squared, and that quantity squared should equal six squared minus four squared, quantity squared, plus two times six times four, and that quantity squared. Notice they're all squared. So, one step further, we get 36 plus 16 squared should equal 36 minus 16 squared plus 2 times 6 is 12, that's 48. So we'll just work all this out and give us a 48 squared. Next step, what do we get? 52 squared is going to equal, what do you got? 36 minus 16, that's 20 squared plus... 48 squared. So let's check that. Does that actually work? This would be my set of Pythagorean triples. 20, 48, and 52. And I generated those using 6 and 4. Let me check it out. So here's my trusty calculator. 52 squared is 2704, and 20 squared plus 48 is 2704. So we know it works. All right, now here's the part where I'm going to check your notes to see if you're actually doing this. I want you to generate over here your own. You're supposed to generate your own using two other numbers. Don't use six and four. So do that right now. Generate your own right here. And as I said, this should be unique for each student. So if I get a bunch of students that come in with the same numbers, or if you write this out, I'm gonna see how many of you actually write this down in the notes because I'll see who's paying attention to my notes. You better be taking good notes here. All right, so now 4A, all right, so let's practice one more time with 4a. I'll get you started and then you can finish it and then you can do one all by yourself. So it says generate a Pythagorean triple using each pair of given integers. So they give you these two integers. They want you to generate a Pythagorean triple. So I'm gonna write down this amazing formula. And remember the larger number is r. And you always remember, because this piece right here, you're gonna subtract s from r. So r's gotta be bigger. That's how you remember which one's bigger. So we're gonna make the seven the r and then we'll make the four the s, which kind of looks like a five, so I apologize about that. So let's get it all set up here and then you can finish it out. We get seven squared plus four squared, quantity squared should equal seven squared minus four squared, quantity squared, plus two times seven times four. All right, you figure out the rest of it. Don't forget your squared and we'll see which Pythagorean triple you get. Pause the video and complete the rest of it. Okay, so here's what I got when I worked it all out. I got the set of numbers, which is, let's put them in set notation, 33, 56, and 65. Those are the three numbers that are should be a Pythagorean triple, which means that 33 squared plus 56 squared should equal 65 squared. Let's check it out. Here's 65 squared. 33 squared plus 56 squared is the same. So it works. Fantastic. One last one. You're going to do it all by yourself. Page 366. I lied. Page 339. You're going to do part C. Do part C. Do 15 and 20 all by yourself and see what you get. Okay, so here's what I got. 175. Boom. 600 and 625. Your work should be here and you should get that answer. If you don't get that answer, please check in with your teacher. Put up that red cup. 
so we know that you have a question. So make sure you get 175, 600, and 625. Now let's hop down to number six. The integers 5, 12, and 13 make up a fairly well-known Pythagorean triple. It's true. 25, 144 equals 169. It works. In fact, I think 5, 12, 13 might be the most famous Pythagorean triple. 5, 12, 13. So if I were to generate 5, 12, and 13, I know the 13 would come right here because it's the longest side, right? And then the other two sides are coming from these two numbers, but I'm not quite sure which expression created each of these numbers when I plugged in Euclid's, uh, when I plugged the two numbers into Euclid's formula. So I don't know like if this is where the 12 came from, or maybe the 12 came from over here. We're not sure. So Here's my advice. We're going to try a little guess and check and see what happens. This number we know generated a 13. So I'm going to write an equation, r squared plus s squared. We know that that equals 13. Furthermore, I'm going to guess and suppose, what if this generated the 12? So I'm going to do r squared minus s squared is equal to 12. All right, let me try to do a little math for this. If you remember algebra one, this is a system of equations. We have two equations at the same time. They're all lined up, the r's, the s's, the equals, and the numbers, the constant at the end. If I add these equations, I'm gonna get 1r squared plus 1r squared is 2r squared. These cancel out, and this all equals 25. Now I can try to solve it to find the value of r. So when I divide by two, I get r squared equals 12.5, and I run into some problems. I gotta take a square root, and this is ugly, oh no. So because it's ugly, I know that this combination, this must not have generated a 12. This must have been the 5. Let me cross that out. Let's make that the 5, and we'll make this one the 12. And I'm going to redo the problem. I'll change the color here. So I'm going to redo the problem. We still have 13 equal to r squared plus s squared. That's going to equal 13. And now let's suppose that r squared minus s squared generated the 5. We're going to play the same game again. We get two r squareds. These will cancel, and that's equal to 18. And you notice when we do it this way, we're going to divide and get r squared equal to 9. This is much less ugly. This is prettier. Take a square root. We get r equal to 3. That's fantastic because if r equals 3, that's a whole number. That's an integer. Remember, we don't want decimals. So if you run into a decimal, just switch these two numbers around until uh, you get a whole number integer right here. Uh, we still have to find s. Let's do that, and we'll do that one in green. So I know now because the middle term generated the 5, I can look at the last term. So 2rs had to equal 12, right? So if we write that out, we can divide each side by 2. I get r times s has to equal 6. But I know that r equals 3, so it's 3s has to equal 6. So s will equal 2. So my final answer is r is equal to 3, and then s equals 2. How about that? Those are the two numbers that generate the 5, 12, 13 uh, Pythagorean triple. And you can plug it back in and check it out. And that's it. So I guess that's all we got for this lesson. This is Mr. Kelly and K-Town. Remember, it's nice to be important. It's more important to be nice. Good luck.